Okay, IT committee, August 5th, 2021, 9.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m., <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, roll, please. I tag her. Here. Bowers. Yes. Hughes. Here. Sure. You bet. Young. Yes. Call the meeting to order. Or is there a motion for the agenda? Moved by Mr. Schur. Second by Mike. Okay, no. public comments. Good job. Let me go yes. <laughs> public comments. Mm. Okay, Michael Tabor. Uh, so uh, Jill and I uh, um, talked to Ruder Technologies about the phone um, discussion. Um, I didn't print extra copies. I gave them one. Okay, excellent. Uh, so they provide, uh, and Jill, I, I can talk about it or you can talk about it. Go ahead. I'm not a representative for Reuter, but um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm the techie guy here, so I'll, I'll talk about it. So, so uh, they did provide alternative pricing for telephone service. Uh, that is in the, um, uh, let's see, the uh, SIP quote. So the document that's uh, labeled SIP quote is the alternative telephone uh, service, and they're quoting um, a monthly cost of $486.05 for that alternative phone uh, service, and that should be significantly cheaper than AT&T, um, specifically because AT&T charges uh, long distance uh, per call cost, and this, uh, new phone service uh, has unlimited bundle calling. So that's, um, in my opinion, the reason why uh, why it beats at t as far as cost. But it comes with caveats uh, uh, that uh, the phone system at the courthouse needs to be upgraded first. But uh, before we talk about the upgrade piece, does anyone have any questions about the phone service piece? Uh, uh, as far as the technology on the phone service, this is a SIP technology. Uh, so it's provided via the internet. Uh, so it would be, um, it won't be, come in through a separate device. Uh, it will come in through the Iroquois County's internet connection and through the Iroquois County equipment to phone uh, equipment. So there's, um, um, dependencies there there's new dependencies uh, the telephone service will be dependent on things that, that wasn't in the past um, but this is the way that phone services go uh, there's no besides it being different there's no concerns uh, just the um, understanding that it's dependent on other equipment now if you go this route for twenty-seven thousand dollars, we get new phones at the courthouse. So, so the upgrade piece. So, to use a, a phone service like this, the um, equipment at the courthouse would need to be upgraded, and they provided uh, the phone piece for upgrading the phones. And then uh, there's some some new cabling at the courthouse that's needed. Uh, so, there's two quotes there. Um, when they upgraded the phones at the admin building they upgraded all the cabling uh, they're not proposing that in this situation uh, in my opinion it's just because uh, the cabling is somewhat sufficient except for these runs and to redo all the cabling at the courthouse would be a massive job so uh, that's totally an option we could ask them and other contractors to do a total rehaul of the network cabling uh, but it would be significantly more expensive than what was done at the admin building because of the building structure and, and access to uh, where the cables run um, the courthouse in comparison would be for a full overhaul of network cabling would be very significant. So, and at this point, not 
not necessary. Um, the, the caveat to that, since it's not doing a complete uh, network cabling overall at the courthouse, then the uh, router will have to work with area-wide to utilize the existing networking equipment and network cabling. So that would be billable time on area-wide time that's not included in this. Uh, and some uh, network um, switch uh, upgrades, aka replacements, that you would need to do to run these phones. Um, that's not included in these. Do you have an idea how much that might entail? Uh, I, I, uh, I will. I can put that together and, and provide that to you guys. Um, yeah, I would, I would hate to give a number and it be off. So, but uh, you know, we're talking, you know, ten to twenty hours of area-wide support, um, and then four to five new switches. Uh, so, a ballpark number, uh, ten thousand. You know, and that's just off the very top of my head. And that's not included in this. But on the other side, I did get, um, finally after my third representative, AT&T, um, our contracts are up this month. So they sent us new ones and I provided you with those. There is two options. Um, the information here is for dedicated uh, bundles and this will include our 23 phone lines and our 30 phone lines on both. We have two accounts. We have uh, account ending in 649 and account ending in 7517. Um, and uh, let's see here. So both, we have the option to do 24 or 36 months. Um, the internet portion of it is solely to run the voice, uh, the voice lines over. <coughs> we have a few of those, but mostly everybody else is plug and go. Reviewing your current, um, when they reviewed our current services, um, what they did was they bundled them together and gave us two different options for speed. And you will have to forgive me, but the first one is for 100 M. 100 megabytes. There you go. And uh, the other one is for 50 megabytes. So the 50 megabyte is currently what we are running on and the to bundle those two accounts together they gave us a new contract um, quote of two thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars and seventeen cents a month which ends up saving the county five hundred and twenty eight dollars a month from what we're currently paying um, if you wanted to move up our speed to 100 megabytes then it would be two thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars and seventeen cents with a monthly savings of $648.37. The speeds seem odd um, because we don't need their internet connection for internet. So I, I would assume that they would have provided maybe a 10 meg uh, uh, option. Uh, just again, like you said, for the, the, the phone uh, service coming in, they need some kind of connection. Mm -hmm. there. Um, right. But, but, um, but they can send an adjusted uh, uh, quote later. Mm -hmm. That would be a question I would ask. Joe, um, are you sure that's in megabytes and not megabits? If it's bits, then, then it'd be a totally different story. If bits, you're going to have a lot slower connection. Green scheme. And again, this is just the connection for the telephone service. Mm -hmm. So that would be a, a question to check in with them is, uh, we're not intending to use this for internet connectivity. Would it's you, only for phone. Is this the appropriate speed for yeah. phone only? Okay. Yeah, I can double check on the speed. I did verify that we are not using the internet services only for the um, voiceover phones. But, uh, so, so it's odd that they give you internet speed options. And I don't know if this bundle um, 
because she should ask if we'd be interested in a bundle, and I said, well, if it saves us money, why not? Um, I'm not sure if, if that's the lowest bundle option they have. I don't know. I will pass. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I will pass. Yeah. Then uh, the other question would be, what's the price if we unbundle it? Um, the price that they unbundled it was going to be around where we're, where we're currently at. So it's more. Yeah. So just looking at a savings aspect of it. Is it a two year or one year? We can do 24 months or 36 months. Which would do the smaller if we're moving to something like this. So uh, we passed our deadline for to notify them that we want to change service providers. Do we have to lock in with two years? No, you could lock in with one. <coughs> we could do one year with AT&T. Mm -hmm. Did they give the price for the one year? It's the same. Yeah. Okay. This is the option for, um, actually it says on these two up at the top, it says contract length this 24 months, but we can go 34 months. For 12 months. Right. Okay. And, and we discussed last time that uh, um, since we're assuming that we don't want to go month to month for AT&T for six, seven months until we could do uh, potentially do something like this, we'd lock them in for a year, hopefully not two years, and then you'll have the AT&T long enough to potentially do an a, a upgrade to the courthouse and do a, a different phone provider, so in the long run. Uh, so that was two thousand a month. You said uh, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred a month. Mm -hmm. And that includes long distance um, or local calling. So that would save more than two thousand a month for switching providers. It would save um, if we went with the depending on speed, but with the lower speed, it'd be eight hundred and twenty thousand savings. And the, the alternative phone service is a five-year contract. So if we didn't like the five-year conditions. So going with the other phone service, we would be forced to upgrade the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Which you technically need with to eventually, do. Eventually, yes. Uh, because if some equipment has a failure at the courthouse, you'll be, under, you'll be in the same situation. Um, <clears throat> we upgrade the equipment at the courthouse. How much of an inconvenience does that cause over there? Are they without service for a period of time? No. Not if it's planned. No. I mean, the only the, reason we were out of service is because it got hit and it right. went out. Yeah, so they'll, they'll theirs have, is still running. They'll have the old phone on their desk, and then they'll set the new phone, and they'll, um, you know, they'll have both phones in front of them. Mm -hmm. So it should should not be inconvenient. There'll be, you know, the day of the change where the old phone will stop ringing and the new phone will start ringing. But mm -hmm. um, if it's done in the typical manner, that's what it would look like. Well, we just said at the finance committee meeting about about the software, CAD software, that if the company doesn't notify us ahead of time that we don't want to do business with them, I'd say well, at and isn't notifying us about better plans that they have available. Why do we want to keep doing business with them? If we follow their line of thinking, I think we ought to make them immediately start making plans to get rid of AT&T and go to Reuter. Does that make sense? Based on Michael's, yep. I, think, I, mean, I don't know. The numbers are pretty is, but, obvious, but, yeah. But what Michael had said previously, that we're not the only ones that have problems with AT&T. <laughs> it's a widespread issue, so. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, too, Part of the discussion on how the phone system was chosen for this building was we had several board members that didn't want to go all internet, and that's what you'd be doing. Well, this uh, so we had area wide providing an all internet cloud solution or on premise solution. So this what we're considering here is a hybrid. So the phone system and the phones are on premise, mm -hmm. but then the the telephone service would be coming in from the cloud. So right. So, so the that's cloud, a, if the service went down, then what's the point of the phones? Well, well um, that's so, so if, if a cloud phone system had cl cloud issues, 
or this has cloud issues and mm -hmm. you're in the same batch. But um, uh, but the phone system, internal calls would still work. So okay. that would be the cap, the little uh, bonus, is if you had cloud issues, you could call your neighbor. So, so yeah. there's the benefit there. Every system has some problem. Possibility. Oh, okay. But yeah. just putting it in layman's turn, if it, this system, if it that's goes a, down, you're done. Yeah, because we point. had, we could call between each other when the phone service went down the last time. Yep. Yep. So just. Moral of the story is no phone service is good. <laughs> <laughs> they all stink. Any other questions? It's like everything else, though, none of them is perfect. No. Everything, a lot of, when it comes to technology, there's a lot, you have to consider what's dependent on what. Okay, so summarize this. We, option one is you stay with at and and life goes on. And not upgrade the courthouse phones until later at some point. That's and I, I think give Sandy the uh, any spare um, workable oh, sure. things so. that we um, could use from the old system just in case. We have a half backup. A half. You you have spare phones, uh, um, uh, so that's good. If the phone system at the courthouse goes down, then you're up a creek. I have some of those parts. That we're still working. Oh, that's true. So, because you have it from yes, the old I system do. that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do have that too. Not a perfect. Okay. Solution. And in order to do upgrade, it's twenty-seven thousand plus plus ten plus roughly thirty-seven thousand. But the cost is cheaper. And my question the is, monthly cost or whatever. I mean, we would have to. Would we have to bid that out? Yes. Or you just go with yeah. Ruder because that's what we have here at the admin building. Well, technically, Ruder's the phone under. upgrade is twenty thousand. So, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you bundle all those costs together and and uh, have, have to quote it out or or something else. <clears throat> the way that we went with Ruder was by handling it as two separate deals. The one deal was the phones, the other was the lines. Mm -hmm. If you do that the same way here, then you don't have to. Do the But, so I'm, I'm but either way, we're I'm committed gonna... to at least two years with at t as we sit right now. Um, right. Sounds like we can do one year. Yeah, yeah I can. Sorry. No. The thing mm -hmm. is, and you need one year to get this sure. all uh, arranged and transferred yeah. over and tested, just like we did with the internet. If I'm understanding these numbers here, and we've got quite a few of them floating around, but it looks to me like in three or four years, we'd have a payback. And to me, that's not a bad business decision. And we get a service system. And you get a new system, new features, and, and actually service. And it's uh, serviceable as well. So you get that's it. probably the biggest issue. Is that we have another nightmare? <laughs> so AT&T's 12 month price is what again? 2000 Five hundred thirty-three dollars and seventeen cents a month. <coughs> the bundled price. Sounds like it's the cheapest option that they are offering at this time. Mm -hmm. And then this one is four eighty-six monthly. Oh, oh, and and don't uh, they have a one-time cost? Of six seventy two, so you have to throw that all in the one time category. So that's that's a monthly savings of roughly fifteen hundred a month. So that'll add up, add up quickly. Eighteen month payback. It's a
<clears throat> if those numbers are accurate, that's what it would be. If we, a bad deal. Yeah, if we round, if we rolled all together, that's roughly 38,000 one time cost and divided by 1,500, that's 25 months. I guess I didn't put the 10,000 in. Yeah, I threw the 10,000 in too for printing the Googles. Two years is still a good payback. <laughs> no. So if we approve this, how do we fit that into budget? I have to go in. The post? This year's? Mm -hmm. But if we were if we were going to do that, we have to establish a timeline as to, like, for example, when would Reuters start putting the new phones in over at the courthouse? We want that done before we cancel the AT&T out. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to have some sort of a timeline as to when they're going to start, when they're going to be done. Because if we go one year, we don't be a year from now that when AT&T is done. Yeah. So we'd be ready to make a switch over. Mm -hmm. So if they can be done by next year between May and June, let, let's say May, uh, if they're done by May of next year, that will give you two months to wrap everything up with AT&T. That will give you some... How much advance notice do we have to give AT&T that we're not going to make a change? Um, 90 days. Okay. But, but I, I, I would foresee it wouldn't take, take. If, if they got started in January, yeah, they, you know, it'd be done. They got this whole building know. done in a matter of weeks. Yeah. So. Yeah. so. <clears throat> there was more a sense of urgency with this one than there would be over there, though. Yeah, I, I uh, still foresee it not taking that long. I mean, I can verify with Jeff, but. Well, the other thing is, you know, the, we, the prices that we're looking at are current. Are they going to be the same six months from now? Yeah. If the federal government keeps giving away money, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> so, I mean, I think even from that standpoint, it might not be a bad idea to lock some of this in as far as our new budget is concerned. Where are we at on the, you didn't talk about the finance, but the, the government, federal money, or whatever. You mean it's so how we're going to spend it? Well, I just can we spend, what can we spend? How much it? do you want? <laughs> 37000 I'll add it to the list. <laughs> we actually received our um, um, first payment yesterday. Yeah, because Javon just uh, asked me where to put these. So that was in yesterday, and it was two, I don't know what it was. Maybe. Around 2.6 million. <coughs> and what was it? It was for if we lost revenue, or what was the other part? Well, they have, I believe they have a formula. You don't necessarily have to have lost revenue if you had anticipated more might would have come in than what you got. Always. So, I mean, Use it for water and sewer infrastructures, premium pay for employees. There's there's only like six things on the list. Um, this looks like infrastructure. But they also have they also list two areas you can't use it for. They don't list any other areas. So there's no. a, there's a yeah, it's pretty blank or black area. Well, judging by the Democrats' uh, earlier description of what infrastructure included, I think pretty much anything in our entire budget would be there. <laughs> well, I think the county clerk has some good ideas about how to get new voting machines, and I think she said other counties are planning something similar. Well, so. But if you got more money, so I'm just saying that if we can. Second payment. Is it the same as the first? You are best about that one. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think I just want to talk about that. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. 
then the other request that I have is um, for the jail to be outfitted with, um, what do you call that? Like tele telecourt, I think is what they call it, so they can. Uh, video conferencing? Yes, thank you. Video yeah. conferencing so they could uh, conference into courts and not have to transport. <coughs> I would say, considering it pays itself off in 18 months, and that it probably makes sense to do it, that if that money includes infrastructure, I would say that's county infrastructure. Works for me. The only it's thing you general fund. <clears throat> the only caveat with any of these things is that if, if we use it for that, and when it gets submitted, if they kick it back, then we have to we have to pony up the money. That's well, so we I think on this one in particular, considering the size of it in relation to other things we do, and the fact that it pays for itself in 18 months, we could probably figure out a way to make that happen. Right, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I think, just, I think that's something we can add to the list. So do you want me to see about, or verify with AT&T, on the 12 month contract? Yes. Or, okay. If we have a problem with that, um, the, just spitballing, uh, if we have a problem with the getting stuck with two year, we can still do the upgrade, but then move the phone service in, in two years. Um, so, um, if, if, if something like that happens. But we don't want to wait two years. No, no, because we're using that. Yep. We've waited long enough. You said something about these are old numbers, like the, 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 the numbers may change. I mean, can we get them? Th these are good for 60 days. For so 60 days, if yeah. we sign off before then, I'm assuming that they'll be locked in. And yeah, I'm just doing if we talk to so that's from the 30th, it. so right. by the end of September, which hopefully. Why don't we make a resolve to get all these loose ends pulled together by our next meeting and make a motion to move forward then? That sounds good. And then I can, uh, I'll work up a price for our side of the project. Right. So you can have some numbers there. I'll work with Jeff. Yeah, we make a motion and put it in the budget and sign the contract for next year. Next month, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, other things then, Michael? Uh, just an update on the Windows 7 replacements. Um, uh, we are we worked with the last two departments and we just got. Um, Four machines that are in progress of being replaced, and, and we're all done. So, uh, so we're gonna be done with the Windows 7 uh, replacements uh, here shortly. Okay. Um, we talked about doing a closed session for the um, information security risk assessment, but that's something we can push off uh, the Cyber Navigator risk assessment. So we can push that off to later time. No emergencies or anything that needs to be discussed. Oh, there was a... Big dot gov thing. Yes, the dot gov thing. Yes, so I don't know if you remember me talking to you about this, Michael. The, the clerk's office has to utilize um, a dot gov website and a dot, and dot gov email addresses um, based on the new public act that was passed in June. Um, we also have to um, have monthly vulnerability scans. Um, do we do that now? Is it monthly? I, something no. is, I think the backups are monthly. Um, back, uh, backups are we checked weekly. Well, we, and, and we test we've them monthly. We've since changed that to monthly and yearly with Adam. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So Adam does those things. But the vulnerability, I, I couldn't remember. That's a no. no okay. There's no current vulnerability scans, but we talked about. Um, that there's solutions that can do that. Okay, so and that, it depends what vulnerability 
we need uh, specifics, but we can. Uh, I don't know that they had specifics. I think it just said monthly vulnerabilities. I'm not said. sure. I'm pretty sure it was legislators that wrote it, not IT people. <laughs> so that's right. If um, they want any kind of vulnerability scan, we can definitely. Okay, and so the monthly vulnerability scans have to happen within six months of the effective date of the um, of the law, which was June seventeenth. Uh, so in December, that would have to happen. But all the rest have to happen within a year. Um, we also have to have endpoint detection and response security tools. We have that. We have those currently. Yep. I thought we did. Mm -hmm. And again, um, if they have more specifics. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think that they do. Yep. Um, and then the, like I said, the .gov website address and the .gov email addresses. Um, I just wanted to bring that up in case it was going to be a budgetary like issue. So I wanted finance and IT to be aware that there yeah. might be an increase in what they're planning on spending because of those mandates that have to yeah. be done. Yeah, we, um, we need details, but it shouldn't be a big deal. There'll, there'll okay. be a little bit of labor but it sounds like it'd probably be tuesday labor um but uh we just have to get details on where the we or who we need to talk to to get that dot gov uh, name and once we have that name then, then we just mix it. okay so i'll shoot an email to alex and cc on it because i don't yeah. know um I'm assuming they'll say talk to Bob and he'll set you up with the .gov. Right. And then um, there was the cyber, uh, what do we used to call that, the security assessment that Michael mm -hmm. was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. Cyber. That is also another uh, mandated thing. However, the state has done them and we have participated, so Every we'll time. continue to do that. So, um, and that's a free of charge. What, what did they say with the endpoints? Endpoint what? It just said we had to have endpoint detection and response security tools. Detection. Um, it, again, if, the, if they have specific, it, if that's all they give us, then yes, you have it. Okay. So if they give us more specifics, then that might change. Okay. Um, all right. And then I can provide you and Jill information on a service that we do for other customers, uh, and they provide a monthly external vulnerability scan service that's nice. pretty inexpensive and okay. if that's all they're asking for that would that should fit the bill there. Right. And we can have those numbers both well, those sets of numbers for like next one you guys oh yeah the, mm -hmm. um the the big point there was the monetary bill monthly vulnerability scans and, and I can get that pricing real quick. You don't think like web foot or anything like that would that be easy just to switch our current website over to? Uh, so so uh, no infrastructure changes will be made. Uh, you're just adding an additional domain name uh, uh, and it'll point to your current infrastructure. So, so all we're doing is adding another, adding- uh, You're not changing at all, you're just Making it so it two ways to get there. Yeah. So so I, you're basically instead of calling Jill Jill, you give a nickname to Jill and call her. Uh, well, uh, should have picked whatever. a better name. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jay. Right. Ba basically, you're giving nicknames yeah. to your current infrastructure. Well, like companies that got mm -hmm. right. Verizon.net and Verizon.com, and they all go to the same website. No exactly. What you find. Mm -hmm. So we, so we're just adding aliases or. Nicknames to what right. we already have. Right. We do have a nickname for. <laughs> but I'm not gonna We're not going to say it. Lately, it's been animal control director. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, we're going to move on to the next item. Right. Yeah. 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 Any new business? Is there a motion for adjournment? Moved by Michael, seconded by Paul. All those in favor say aye. 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 Linda called me last night. Oh, do what? Do we got?